Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me on how to puree a pumpkin. We're going to take this and make it into this. So stay tuned with us and let's puree it. All right, first step is I take Linus here. Linus is actually from my garden. Most of yours is not going to look, look like this. Mine's actually a little bit smaller uh, because it's from my garden. Uh, better for pureeing that way. However, just go to your store and you want to make sure you pick out a ripe pumpkin. See how it's nice and orange? You don't want green on it. Green means it's not going to be able to break up. The sugars haven't been able to sit as much and it's not going to be as sweet. So it'll probably look like baby boot green too, which is not very good. So just grab the pumpkin. You can use a knife on a really well ripe pumpkin. However, I find it easier if you just go out, sterilize a nice saw, put the pumpkin down, and you want to slice it right in the center. So, I mean, you can do it other ways. It just makes it easier when you bake it and you just prepare it just overall it's easier. All right, just grab it. All right, just a few quick slices here just to kind of guide me. Just go down and make sure you don't lose any fingers. It's pretty hard. This guy's been in there a while, it's still hard. So a saw is probably your best bet. So just cut down like that, bam. Quick and easy. Then just grab a scooping object. All right, just make sure that the rind from the sides gets off the best you can. Doesn't have to absolutely be perfect, but it is nice to get as much as you can, but you don't want to leave any seeds for obviously reasons, for obvious reasons, so. All right. Scoop all that stuff out. See, there's still gonna have a seed or two in there. All right, now that we got this guy cleaned out, you can see it's smooth in there, the seeds are all gone. It's not perfect, but that stuff can eventually be turned into a puree anyway, it's not bad. Anyway, next we're gonna go over here to a little station. You want a little olive oil for this. Olive oil seems to work the best for me. You're gonna need a little bit of salt. I use pink salt, the Himalayan pink salt, that's instrumented, you know, as evidence of its own here. And I just kind of put this guy down, take out the olive oil, just drip some in there like that. I already have a little bit. And uh, you probably need all together maybe a fourth cup of oil for both of them. You're not gonna use a lot of salt either. So. All right, next you just take it, your little brush here, make sure you paint on it. Go, just, you wanna paint it inside. You don't wanna really cone it too much where it's saturated. So just a few scoops, dips should be fine. Make sure to get that outer layer. That. See, you can see it's nice and oily in there, it's reflective. Then just take some pinch of salt here, there, a little on top of the rind. That's basically what you would do for both of them. So, next we'll be able to put them on the rack and put them on the oven. All right, these guys nice and oiled up. Just put them in a tray. I don't, I've never covered them, I've never needed uh, never had a reason to, so I'm not really worried about that. Next, you want to come over here. You set the oven to 350, and you want to let it bake for probably about an hour. Right now, it's going to preheat. When that thing preheats, we're going to put this, these guys in the oven and just wait an hour and take our next step. Buzzer just went off. Turn the oven off. Go ahead and take it out of the oven. These, I would recommend waiting at least a half hour before you start cutting into them. Um, you notice it's kind of a nice, deeper orange color, kind of a tannish color. A little bit of um, burnt stuff right there. That's fine. All of that stuff will grind up anyway in um, the puree machine, so that's fine. So let's go ahead and start with uh, grabbing our knife and going ahead and showing you how to cut it to be able to throw it in the puree machine. All right, just grab one of these guys. Now, mine's still pretty hot. I didn't wait exactly 30 minutes. Uh, it's not a big deal. Uh, depends upon the kind of heat tolerance you have. I would basically just go ahead and cut it like what it can. Just kind of uh, <clears throat> makes it easier. You can just, you know, get rid of this. Get this guy out of the way. So it makes it a little bit easier on you. Just cut down into strips, like little pieces like that. So we'll make this one a little bit smaller here. So each one, basically what you're gonna do now is you wanna remove 
um, the line right there. And, you know, be careful, don't cut yourself, but you see, notice it, like, it just, it, it just peels right off you know, because that heat. So, if you just, um, kind of just cut it out, Ooh, it's slippery hot. So. Makes it easier for the machine right there to just kind of cut it into little strips or chunks like that. All right, pretty much what I've done is I've cut up half the pumpkin now into smaller chunks. Depending upon the size of your puree machine, you may be able to get cold with these. It's probably, you know, a five pound pumpkin. So, uh, but this guy, cut it up into smaller chunks like this. It's easier on the machine all the way around. So just put that in. Just make sure you get your top on right so it's flying all over you and covered you with stuff. So just let it, pretty much you're gonna turn the puree on. You're gonna have to let it run for several minutes, uh, checking it periodically as well. So. so what I had to do is I actually had to uh, put it on high for probably two or three minutes at a time, occasionally stopping it to kind of pick out the chunks and then letting it go again. So those chunks hit the blade down there. So, you know, you're probably looking at altogether around five minutes or so of, of blending. So just grab that up. I just like to take out that blade right there, set that aside. Just go ahead, see how that's nice and smooth. All the chunks are gone like that. So you just put that down, spatula, and you know, doesn't work really matter if it's not perfect because we're gonna have to do the other side here in just a second, so. All right, we are done now with the puree. Look how much that made. I mean, this is a, you know, look at the size of this, you know, cupware. I don't really know the size exactly, but that's a lot of puree from that one pumpkin. And that was actually just a medium-sized pumpkin. So if you have one that's bigger, be prepared to be baking a lot because this is going to make a lot of pumpkin bread or cookies or uh, cheesecakes. Whatever you need pumpkin in, this is going to do it. So thanks everyone for joining me how to puree a pumpkin. You saw how much personally that would make, so if you want, just go to the store and grab a pumpkin if they still have any, and bam, you're gonna have loads and loads of puree, probably enough to make quite a few loads of bread, pumpkin cookies, or maybe even a cheesecake. Now, stay tuned for our next how-to video, where I'm gonna make this easy crock pot meals. About five minutes to do in the morning, you know, you get up, you don't have to spend any time worrying about getting home from work and spending all this time on a big meal, you just get it, set it and forget it, come home and bam, it's done. No, this is no crock. This is very easy. So stay tuned for our next video. So remember to like our channel, like our videos and post with any comments. Have a good day.